Hello. As we, you probably know, we are celebrating this year, 2020, the 10th anniversary of a resolution adopted by the UN General Assembly in 2010 that recognizes explicitly that water and sanitation are human rights. In the same year, 2010, the Human Rights Council adopted a similar resolution recognizing those rights in a more detailed way. We can ask several questions around this context and this moment when we are celebrating the resolutions. And one key question is who is responsible to make those rights real? I can say that there are different layers of responsibilities on that. We can think firstly on the international arena, the international actors, and we can identify several of them there, the UN agencies, for instance, the international banks that promote development cooperation. And it's very key that those agencies that have some type of link of bound uh, relationship with the UN resolutions, that they clearly align their policies with the human rights to water and sanitation framework. So when an agency goes to the field to implement services, when an agency implement or publish guidelines, when, for instance, UN Water, that is a type of coordinating body of all UN agencies, uh, establishes a dialogue with those agencies, it's very, very key that the message is when the matter is water and sanitation, please do it through the Human Rights to Water and Sanitation Framework. What's the meaning of that? The meaning is that water should be delivered, uh, taking into consideration an adequate level of services with sufficient water, available water, accessible, affordable, safe and acceptable water, and for sanitation, using the same principles and also taking into consideration the privacy and dignity of women and girls. Uh, those interventions should also uh, take into consideration principles like equality and non-discrimination, the right to participation, the right to information. At the national level, I would say that we are uh, addressing some of the main actors in this context. The states have clear obligations. These are human rights obligations to implement the human rights water and sanitation. States are bound uh, by different treaties and conventions and resolutions at the UN level, and they need to establish policies and interventions based on those obligations. Otherwise, they will violate the human rights. Uh, this means to have laws, policies, regulations that, uh, that are inspired by this framework. Fortunately, some countries included the human right to water or the human right to sanitation or both in their constitutions or the, in the national law. And this is a first step, very important, not sufficient, but it's better to have those rights inscribed in the, the national law than not. This will give to the justice elements to protect people against violations of those rights. Another layer of responsibility are the civil society organizations. 
in an environment of democratic governance where there are space for the civil society to use their voice and to raise their voice and to implement services, uh, it's very key that there is a protagonism of those organizations in order to put pressure on the governments in order to not to violate the human rights to water and sanitation. This relates to NGOs that are more activists or NGOs that are, has a, a perspective more on implementation services to, to local areas, but also to international NGOs or international networks of NGOs. So when we are talking about water and sanitation, the human rights should be the main guidance, the main way to address those aspects. I know that you are in Switzerland. One question would be, what's the role of Switzerland on that? Uh, I can say briefly that my experience with the government of Switzerland is that usually Switzerland is very supportive of the human rights to water and sanitation, both internally and uh, in the international arena. We can also identify in the development cooperation of Switzerland that the human rights to water and sanitation are always mentioned. And I would encourage Switzerland to continue with this engagement and to support the human rights to water and sanitation in Switzerland is uh, where several international organizations are based and it's very important to show a gesture of support to the human rights to water and sanitation. This can have several implications and influence on some other countries, some other organizations. So I hope we can discuss these elements and help to advance on a more fair world where everyone, everywhere, can have uh, an adequate access to water and sanitation without any discrimination. Thank you. Goodbye.